Welcome back everybody, my name is Brian, and in this video we're going to talk about Pickle, everybody's favorite. So, what the heck is a Pickle? What are we even talking about? This made me giggle so bad when I first was reading about it. So, pickling is a way of saving food. It's a very old way of doing it, and we're going to do the same thing with objects. So we're going to serialize them, which is a more modern term, but we're going to preserve an object, and that object can be saved and stored in another location, for example, on a disk. So that's right, you can make an object, save it, start your program back up and reload that object like nothing happened. This is incredibly cool. This is called serialization and it gets very, very complex. Pickle, while being great, is not perfect. It does have some limitations. I would encourage you to go out and research DILL, D-I-L-L, -L, and there are other serialization tools out there as well to overcome some shortcomings of pickle. We're gonna go over just the very, very basics of pickling. So what can you pickle? First off, pretty much most Python data types and top level classes, meaning if you make a class in a class in a class in a class, you're gonna have problems. So first things first, let's go ahead and import pickle. Okay, diving right in here. First thing we're gonna do is we are going to put in a decorator. Same decorator that we've used in the previous videos. And if you missed my decorator video, hit rewind on the playlist and watch the decorator tutorial. In case you missed it, all it's gonna do is print a line, print the function name, call the function, and print a line. All right, so our class is going to be overly simple because I'm focused on serializing and deserializing this. We're looking at just the basics of serialization. So we're going to say cat, and then we want to go def, and I'm going to init, and we want to init self with name, age, and info. So name and age seem pretty self-explanatory. We're looking for like a string and an integer, but what is info? That's why we want to really dive into this video. Things are not always what they seem. So we're going to say self.name equals name. And then we're just going to, through the magic of copy and paste, probably be best if I just grab it right out of the top there. And whoopsie, we don't want to mangle those. There we go almost created a little headache for us. So we're gonna say self underscore name, self underscore age, self underscore info. Again, the underscore denotes that these are internal to the class and we don't want other people playing with them. So from here, we're going to make a display function and we want to display some type of message. Let's go ahead and use our decorator just to decorate that, make it look nice and neat on the screen. And then we're going to just print out the message, whatever the message is. But now we also want to print, and we want to put the, want to put the name along with the age. is a, or I should say is years old. Hmm, that doesn't make much sense, does it? Probably help if I spelled all of that correctly. There we go. So name is a age years old cat. There we go. Makes more sense now. And then we're going to take info and that's going to be a dictionary item. So I'm gonna say four, a, comma b in self underscore info dot items. That way we can iterate through those dictionary items and print them out. And then we're going to just say that equals that. Pretty self-explanatory what's going on here. So as you can see, this is not a super, super complex class. Just wanted to cover the basics of it so you knew exactly what we were doing. I'm gonna go ahead and make an instance of this. I'm gonna say Othello. This was the name of one of my cats. 
Unfortunately, Kitty passed away. He was probably the best cat I ever had, but I loved him to death. All right, so Othello. 15. And then we're going to make a dictionary. And color equal black. Wait. Whoops. Wait. He was a very fat cat. And he loves... Eating. It was like his hobby. It was almost like a competitive sport for this cat. And then we're going to say Othello.display. Just want to test this out before we do anything else. So we're going to say display testing. Save and run. Uh oh. Self info. What do we got here? 38. Line 30. <laughs> ah, yes. Little bit of an issue there. See the previous tutorial I did on error handling. All right, so let's go ahead and clear that. There we go. So function, and we can now see our decorator is working as expected. There's our line, there's the function name, our message, and then Othello's 15 year old cat, color black, weight, loves eating, and then end decorator. So everything is now working. What we're going to jump into next is actually serializing and deserializing this object. Notice how we're not talking about serializing the class because the class is a blueprint. We're going to serialize the actual object. All right, fasten your seatbelts. Here comes the pickle. I almost feel like I should have like a pickle with a cape on it or something. But so I'm going to say SC, which is short for serialized cat. And we're going to say ser serialized cat is pickle. I always giggle when I say that. So we are going to dump S. If you remember from a previous video, if it ended in S, it was a string. So that's exactly what's going on here. Same convention. So we're going to dump to a string. And we're going to dump the Othello instance of that cat to a string. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just print this out. Say run. This is what Othello looks like after he's been pickled. Man, that sounds really morbid, pickling a cat. But so you can see some familiarity here, underscore, underscore main. So you can tell exactly where that object is. And then it's got like name and then you see Othello and there's some data in here. So this is really what pickle is doing is it's dumping it into a pickle format. This format is not compatible with applications outside of Python and it's not which you would call backwards compatible, meaning you can't take the newest version of Pickle and then serialize something and load it with an older version of Pickle. That's a more advanced video that we'll get into in the future. But just keep that in mind that Pickle will try to use the newest version. So let's go ahead and save this. So I'm going to say with open. And we want some sort of file name. So I'll say cat.txt. And we want to write binary because this is a binary file we're going to write this out as f remember if we do with it's going to open it give us a variable called f which stands for the file and it's going to close it automatically when we're done all right so we've got this and we're going to say pickle dump so this is the difference between dump s dumps versus dump with no s dump is going to say what do you want to dump? I'm going to give it an object and I'm going to tell it where. So we're going to dump that to a file. Let's go ahead, clear this out and let's run it. So now we have this cat file and it says files not displayed in the editor because it uses unsupported text encoding. Uh, all right, so we're gonna right click and we're gonna open with. And in a previous video, I showed you how to install the hex editor, but just in case you go out here and you just type in hex. And there's a hex editor, you just install it. So flipping back, we're going to actually get rid of that. We're going to right click, open with hex editor. And this is what the serialized object looks like. You can see it is verbatim the same thing, but we've written these bytes out in a binary file. We can now take this file and say email it or transport it across the network or leave it sit on a hard drive, whatever we wanted to do, and have another Python program deserialize or open it back up.
Okay, now that we've serialized and we wrapped our head around the serialization or the pickling process here, we're going to deserialize, which is the exact opposite. It's reading the information back. So I'm going to say my cat equals, and I want to say pickle dot load s because we're going to load a string. And the string is the serialized cat that we did up here. So we're just going to grab him, pop it right there. And I'm going to print from string, just so we know where we are in the console. And we can actually just say my cat dot display. And from string. So really what we're doing is we're taking the string representation of that cat. And notice how it's got a B in front of it. That's denoting that this is binary. So it's going to, I should say bytes, but it's going to take that as a string, put it into pickle, and then load it back into a usable object that we can call functions and run code on. This is extremely cool. So, ta-da! From string from string, and it's exactly the way it was. Othello's a 15-year-old cat, he's black, 15, and loves to eat. So we have revived my cat back from the dead, as crazy as that sounds. We've unpickled my cat. So this is really, really cool. And just to prove that we can do this from a file, we're going to literally take this, copy, paste, and we're going to say, instead of write binary, it's read binary as file, and we're going to pickle load instead of load s and we want to load that file and i'm going to say disk short for disco cat why not and we're going to take that and then we're going to say disk cat dot display from disk and so what this code is going to do is going to go out open this binary file we're going to Open with hex editor. It's going to load the bytes from the file, create an object, and then we can now work with that object. But these are now different objects, even though they're coming from the same data source. Okay. From disk, Othello, color black, weight 15, loves eating. Now, if we do something a little bit interesting, just to wrap this up, I'm going to print these out. So I'm going to print my cat. And I'm going to print this cat just to show you what's going on here. You can see cat object at, and then they are two different memory locations, meaning these are now two different objects. This is one of the little cautionary tales of serializing and deserializing is you can actually save an object and then reload that object multiple times. And you may not want two Othellos. Personally, I'd love to have two of that cat, but it may not be your intent. So be a little bit careful when you're deserializing your objects. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can find the source code out on github.com. If you need additional help, myself and thousands of other developers are hanging out in the Void Realms Facebook group. This is a large group with lots of developers, and we talk about everything technology related, not just the technology that you just watched. And if you want official training, I do develop courses out on udemy.com. This is official classroom style training. If you go out there and the course you're looking for is just simply not there, drop me a note. I'm either working on it or I will actually develop it. I will put a link down below for all three of those. And as always, help me help you. Smash that like and subscribe button. The more popular these videos become, the more I'll create and publish out on YouTube. Thank you for watching.